Hey tech enthusiasts, today we're taking a trip down memory lane to revisit the original AMD Radeon 6950, a powerhouse from 2010. Not to be confused with the RX flagship from a generation ago, this graphics card was a game changer in its time, delivering stunning visuals and impressive performance that left gamers in awe. But how does it hold up today? Join me as we explore its legacy, run some modern performance benchmarks, and see if this classic still has what it takes to compete in the modern gaming arena. Let's get started! The AMD Radeon HD 6950 is a high-end graphics card released by AMD in 2010, part of the Radeon HD 6000 series and based on the Terascale 3 architecture. The Radeon 6950 was a popular choice among gamers and enthusiasts due to its strong performance and competitive pricing. One of its notable features was the ability to be unlocked to a Radeon HD 6970, which boasted more stream processors and a higher clock speed by modifying the card's BIOS. The Radeon 6950 was eventually replaced by the Radeon HD 7000 series, which offered improved performance and power efficiency. Despite being superseded, the 6950 remains a notable graphics card in AMD's history, offering strong performance and value for its time. In a nod to its legacy, AMD reused the name with the RX 6950 XT, which was the company's flagship GPU before the release of the current RDNA 3 series. The RX 6950 XT's naming convention has also been carried forward with subsequent models adopting the 7000 series moniker. The main competitors of the AMD Radeon HD 6950 were the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 560 Ti and GTX 570, both part of the GeForce 500 series and based on the Fermi architecture. Fermi introduced support for parallel kernels, allowing it to execute multiple kernels simultaneously. However, this design had a limitation. Each kernel had to originate from the same CPU thread. This meant that independent threads or applications couldn't issue their own kernels for parallel execution. Instead, the GPU had to context switch between them, which was an expensive operation. AMD took a different approach with asynchronous dispatch, enabling independent threads and applications to issue kernels that could execute in parallel. This gave AMD's hardware a significant advantage, as it avoided the overhead of context switching. In terms of performance, the GTX 570 and the Radeon HD 6950 were closely matched, with each having a slight edge in different games. However, the 6950 generally had better power efficiency and was priced slightly lower than the GTX 570, making it a more attractive option for those seeking a balance between performance and value. Today's card is from VTX 3D, a company that specialized in designing and manufacturing graphics cards based on AMD Radeon GPUs. They offered a range of graphics cards, including custom versions of AMD's Radeon 6950, among others. VTX 3D, short for Vertex and 3D, was founded in 2009 as a subsidiary of TUL Corp. Despite its efforts, the company never gained significant market share. Initially, TUL introduced VTX 3D branded video cards in early 2009 to target budget-conscious customers in Asian and European markets with entry-level Radeon graphics. Over time, the brand expanded its offerings to include more advanced graphics cards competing with the likes of PowerColor and Club 3D a close partner of TUL in Europe. However, in 2016, TUL Corp, the parent company behind PowerColor and VTX 3D, decided to discontinue the VTX 3D brand. The AMD Radeon 6950 boasts an impressive array of specs, including 1408 stream processors, 88 texture units, and 32 ROPs, all running at a clock speed of 800 MHz. It also features 2GB of GDDR5 memory with a memory clock speed of 1250MHz and a memory bandwidth of 160GB per second. The card's TDP is 200 watts and it supports DirectX 11, OpenGL and OpenCL. At the heart of the Radeon 6950 is the Terascale 3 architecture with a Cayman GPU. Developed by AMD, this GPU architecture was used in the Radeon HD 6900 series, including the Radeon 6950. Cayman, named after the lovely Cayman Islands in the Caribbean, was AMD's new high-end GPU. It succeeded Cypress, on which were based Radeon HD 5800 series and the dual GPU HD 5970. 
born from the ashes of TSMC's cancelled 32 nanometer node, Cayman was the biggest change to AMD's GPU microarchitecture since the original Radeon HD 2900. The Cayman architecture marked a significant improvement over its predecessors. With Cayman AMD moved away from the very long instruction word 5 or VLIW5 architecture they have come to know them for in favor of a slightly less wide VLIW4 architecture. In a nutshell AMD's SIMDs became narrower but there are more of them. One of the main reasons for the change was to improve the efficiency of the instruction set. VLIW5 was used in the Terascale 1 and 2 architectures, but it was found that many instructions were not utilizing all five slots, resulting in wasted resources. By moving to VLIW4, AMD was able to reduce the number of unused slots and improve the overall efficiency of the instruction set. Another reason for the switch was to simplify the instruction set and reduce the complexity of the GPU architecture. VLIW4 is a more straightforward and easier to implement instruction set which allowed AMD to reduce the number of transistors and improve the overall performance of the GPU. Additionally, VLIW4 was seen as a more scalable architecture, allowing AMD to more easily increase the number of execution units in future generations of GPUs without sacrificing efficiency. It's worth noting that the switch to VLIW4 was part of a larger effort by AMD to improve the performance and efficiency of their GPUs, and it was a key factor in the development of the Graphics Core Next architecture, which was used in the Radeon HD 7000 series and later GPUs. It was discovered that the 6950 shared a nearly identical core design with the 6970, with the main difference being the lower rated GDDR5 memory on the 6950. The two cards were also differentiated by their BIOS settings, which meant that a simple BIOS flash could effectively upgrade a 6950 to a 6970. However, AMD and its partners later addressed this by physically modifying the cards, either by laser cutting the extra cores or using non-reference designs that wouldn't work with a 6970 BIOS. While some 6950s can still be unlocked to achieve 6970 performance, this now requires careful card selection and custom BIOS modifications, making it a more challenging process. Besides its age, what are the drawbacks of this card? The 6950 supports DirectX 11, but lacks support for newer versions like DirectX 12 and Vulkan. This can limit its performance and compatibility with modern games that utilize these APIs for improved graphics and performance optimizations. The typical 2GB of GDDR5 memory on the 6950 was sufficient in 2010, but is now insufficient for many modern games, especially at higher resolutions or with texture-heavy settings. The card also lacks support for newer technologies such as ray tracing, DLSS and other advanced graphical features that enhance visual fidelity and performance in modern gaming. As a legacy hardware, the 6950 no longer receives driver updates, which can lead to compatibility issues with new games and software. Although AMD typically provides driver support for their older cards for several years after release, support for the 6950 has diminished over time. The last official driver update for the Radeon 6950 was the AMD Catalyst software suite from 2015, which has limited support for newer operating systems and games. While community support and unofficial drivers may still be available, the card may struggle with compatibility for the latest games and software optimizations. I'm extremely impressed by how well the card handles Fortnite at 1080p resolution. Although the game's graphic settings are low due to its built-in performance mode, it's still one of the most popular games today. The developers at Epic Games have done an excellent job optimizing the game and its colorful cartoonish art style requires less graphical power, allowing it to run smoothly on a wide range of hardware. Prior to testing Fortnite, I also ran footage from GTA 5 and PUBG. As an older game, GTA 5 has relatively low hardware requirements and it ran smoothly at 1080p resolution with normal settings. PUBG on the other hand is more demanding, but even with the lowest graphics preset, it maintained around 40-45 FPS, although the visuals weren't ideal. I should note that the desktop configuration also includes a quad-core, 8-thread AMD Ryzen 3, 3100 CPU from 2020, 16GB of RAM and an SSD. 
This setup is more than sufficient to support the capabilities of the video card. The oldest game I tested was Half-Life 2, which predates the graphics card by about 6 years. As expected, the HD 6950 had no issues running Half-Life 2 and other games that use the same source engine, such as Portal, Team Fortress 2 and Left 4 Dead also ran without problems. However, it's essential to note that the card is rarely suitable for newer games. In the Tomb Raider benchmark, the FPS was around 15 and some games like Cyberpunk, Forza Horizon 5 and Far Cry 6 didn't launch at all, likely due to the lack of DirectX 12 support. Even if they had launched, it's unlikely that the video card would have been able to provide adequate gaming performance. Counter-Strike 2 is built on the Source 2 engine, which is an upgrade from the original Source engine used in previous Counter-Strike games. The improvements in graphics, physics and overall game mechanics require more powerful hardware to run smoothly. I am not sure why the game wouldn't let me choose 1080p resolution, but the maximum possible was 900p. The gameplay for casual gaming is fine, but I am not sure about more serious eSport focus. I am not very knowledgeable in the world of Counter-Strike. In conclusion, the AMD Radeon HD 6950 is a graphics card that was truly ahead of its time when it was released in 2010. Its impressive specs, competitive pricing and innovative architecture made it a popular choice among gamers and enthusiasts. Although it's now over a decade old, the 6950 still holds up surprisingly well in certain games, especially those with lower system requirements. However, its age and lack of support for newer technologies make it less suitable for modern gaming. If you're a retro gaming enthusiast or looking to play older games, the 6950 might still be a viable option. Overall, it's a nostalgic reminder of the graphics card landscape of the past.